Bhagavati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'd like to seek your good wishes and your blessings so that we can welcome Lord Nasingade. We are at the um, Srimad Bhagavatam point of 7th Canto, Chapter 8, where it is the appearance day, appearance of uh, Lord Nasingade. So this is a uh, verse that we can recite beforehand. Shri Palaravacha Na kevalam me bhavatas charajan Save balam balinam chapare sham Paravare ami stira jangamaye Pamadaya oye na vasam panita Can I read the translation? Yep, yeah. Translation. Prahlad Maharaj said, My dear king, the source of my strength of which you are asking is also the source of yours. Indeed, the original source of all the kinds of strength is one. He is not only your strength or mine, but the only strength for everyone. Without him, no one can get any strength, whether moving or not moving, superior or inferior. Everyone, including Lord Brahma, is controlled by the strength of the Supreme Personality of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank, Thank you. you. So it's eight, seventh verse of the eighth chapter. And this is a phenomenal. Uh, Pallad Maharaj. <laughs> fearless. So let's make a start. Lord Nasingadev slays the king of the demons. So first uh, six verses. It's all about Irani Kashibu chastising Pallad. After hearing Pallad's preaching, all the children of the demons became devotees. When a pure devotee, Prahlad, preaches the glories of the Lord, following in the footsteps of another devotee, Narad Muni, his preaching becomes effective. So this is the point about having a spiritual master. Spiritual master is very important. And if the disciple follows the uh, instructions of the spiritual master, then whatever he does, he becomes very potent. So in this case, we can see Prahlad Maharaj, um, although preaching to the sons of the demons who have already been um, indoctrinated in the ways of this world by the crazy teachers of Virani Kashipu. But yet those children, uh, because Prahlad Maharaj is if preaching was so effective, they also became devotees. So very powerful preaching. Sanda Naka, being afraid of Pallad's influence on the children, informed Hiranyakashipu. And Hiranyakashipu harshly uh, rebuked Pallad. And he said to Pallad that if the whole world is scared of me, right? The Brahmins, they worship me. The sages, they worship me. Everybody, wor earth worships me. Everybody worships me. So, by whose power has a rascal like you become so important that you appear fearless and overstep my power to rule you? <laughs> so this is a really interesting question. And the answer, we saw the worse. Prahlad said, the source of my strength is the same as a source of yours, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He creates this cosmic manifestation, maintains it and destroys it also. My dear father, give up. Please give up your min demoniac mentality. Do not discriminate in your heart between friends and enemies. Your only enemy is your uncontrolled mind. This is so powerful preaching by Pallad Maharaj. He is not scared of, uh, he is not scared at all of his father, who's such a, a tyrant. And immediately his answer to the question of uh, where do you get your strength from? My strength comes from the same source as your strength. And that's Vishnu. And that's the source of everybody's strength. Now, if good instructions are given to a fool, <laughs> he does not take advantage of them, but becomes more angry. So Prahlad's authorized instructions were not accepted by Hiranyakashipu, who was interested only in money and women. Thus, he responded in anger. 
as follows. Hirani Kashipu said, now you want to die? Let us see your Lord protect you now. So he asked him the question, where is he? Where is your Lord? You keep talking about him. And Prahlad Maharaj very innocently and very uh, factually said, he's everywhere. He had so much faith. God is everywhere. Vishnu is everywhere. There's no place where he's not. So Hirani Kashipu asked him, is he in this pillar? There were many pillars in the palace. So if he's everywhere, then why is he not present in this pillar? And Prahlad Maharaj said, no, he's present there as well. Hirani Kashipu thought himself fortunate as he possessed all the property of the universe. He called Pallad unfortunate because although as his legitimate son, Pallad was to inherit, inherit this property, because of the impudence of his son, he was going to die at his father's hand. At least that's what uh, Pallad was thinking. In all circumstances, the devotee however, can see the Lord everywhere, which is what Pallad was doing. Whereas a non-devotee, he won't see the, uh, the Lord anywhere. That's the difference. And in order to prove that the Lord is present everywhere, uh, sorry, in order to prove that the Lord was not present in that pillar, Hirani Kashipu took up his sword. He took up his sword he got up from his throne and he struck the pillar, not with the sword, but he struck it with his fist. So, um, from within the pillar. Now, in order to prove that uh, he, his devotees' words are always true, are always true, um, he took birth from the pillar, from within the pillar. The Lord took his birth, came a sound, a fearful sound to the whole universe. It appeared to crack even the coverings of the universe. And the sound reached Brahmalok. The devatas thought that the universe was being destroyed. They hadn't realized that they hadn't realized that the Lord was appearing. In fact, the devatas were so uh, afraid of Hiranyakashipu that they were nowhere to be seen. And this was a cause of anger as well for Lord Nashingadev, as we will see a bit later on. Hearing the sound, which had never been heard before, no one could find its origin. So that sound was a terrific roar, that of a lion, but nothing that had been heard before in this world. And this is Lord Nasingadeva. Nasingadeva Bhagwan Ki Jai. We can see the pillar here. He's bursting out from the pillar. A huge, never seen before form of the Lord. Lord Nasingadeva. Half man, half lion. Lord Nasingadeva Bhagwan Ki Jai. Terrific form. This is one of my favorite pictures of Lord Nishingadev. And this is the place where he's reputed to have appeared in Simhachalam in Andhra Pradesh. I don't know if anybody's been there from uh, here. It's the Ahobilam Temple. Uji? Yes. I went to Ahobilam. Oh, very good. Excellent. Do you, when was that? Like 2019, okay, and you still remember it, huh? Yes, Prabhu. Wow, and this is the Ukrastamba, the remains of the pillar from which Lord Nasingadev appeared. So, very interesting. Hopefully, one day we'll get a chance to go there just to prove that the statements of his devotee, Prahlad, true. The Supreme Lord Nasingadev then 
emerged from the pillar in a wonderful form that was never seen before. Lord Krishna has told Arjun to declare, declare it boldly that his devotee never perishes. So that's in Bhagavad Gita 931. Hirani Kashyapu was astonished to see the Lord emerging from the pillar. And he was thinking, what is this creature that is half man, half lion? So if you look here, he's, he's really amazed. He's thinking, wow, what is this? <laughs> Hirani Kashyapu never thought an animal and human being would be combined so that the demons like him will be puzzled by such a form. This is the meaning of the Supreme Lord's omnipotency. So he's omnipotent, able to appear in any form he likes. He can do anything he wants. He was extremely fearful. So this is the Lord with his angry eyes, deadly teeth, sharp, uh, razor sharp tongue and gaping mouth. His arms spreading in all directions as he killed the demons, rogues and atheists. So let's have a look a little bit more about his features. Hirani Kashipu studied the form of the Lord, trying to decide who the form of Nishingadev standing before him was. So the fo Lord's form was, so we'll just have a little description of that again. Extremely fearsome because of his angry eyes, which resembled golden, molten gold. His shining mane, which expanded the dimensions of his fearful face. So his face looked even bigger because of his domain. Let's have a look at that. There you go. Very beautiful. Roaring away. His deadly teeth and his uh, razor sharp tongue, which moved about like a dwelling sword. Dueling, dueling sword. His ears were erect and motionless. His nostrils and gaping mouth appeared like the caves of a mountain. His jaws parted fearfully and his entire body touched the sky. His neck was very short and thick. His chest was broad, his waist was thin. And the hairs on his body as white as the rays of the moon. His arms which resembled flakes, flanks of soldiers spread in all directions as he killed the demons, rogues, and atheists with his conch shell, disc, club, lotus. So this is the terrific, terrific form. This is a little bit of a close-up. This is the deity, I think, in uh, Mayapur, right? Covered in Chandan. Mm -hmm. Hirani Kashipu attacked the Lord. So at first he was amazed and then he came to his senses. He was amazed at the Lord's opulence, his feature as uh, Nishingadev. But then he realized he had to fight him. <laughs> so he attacked the Lord and disappeared into his effulgence. So he was a tiny little speck trying to fight the Lord. And his efful Lord's effulgence is so bright, he disappeared into it. As he ran Kashipu attacked the Lord, Nishingadev caught him. And then he would drop him just as Garud plays with the snake. So at that time, the demigods, they came, they were, they were present. Finally, they showed themselves because the Shingadev had come, Lord Vishnu had come. So they no longer were fearful, but the Shingadev was playing with Hirani Kashipu. And that was to the dismay of the demigods. They were hiding behind the clouds and thinking if Hirani Kashipu escapes death, then he will take revenge on them, the demigods. And they were thinking, Yani Kashipu has already taken our homes. Now he will take our lives as well. <laughs> this was their mood. This is uh, Hirani Kashipu fighting with Lord Nishingadev. Thinking falsely that the Lord was afraid of his prowess, Hirani Kashipu flew here and there throughout the sky after playing with him for some time. Lord Nasingadev finally captured him, put him on his lap and tore him to pieces with his nails. Although his body, 
uh, Hiranikashipus could not be pierced even by thunderbolts. Yet the Lord was able to easily pierce him, his body with his nails. In order to keep Lord Brahma's promise intact, the Lord killed Hiranikashipu in the following way. He pierced him at the door. So in the doorway, which is not in the assembly hall, nor is it outside, right? So that was the boon that was given by Brahma. You can't be killed inside or outside. He placed him on his lap, which was neither land or sky. Right? So then the boon was, I can't be killed in the, uh, on, on land or sky or even water. So he was placed on the lap. He was pierced by his nails, which are neither living nor dead, nor any weapon. He had a boon, can't be killed by any weapon. He killed him during the twilight, which was neither day nor night. Twilight is in between. And there were a few other things. Um, I think he was, uh, can't be killed in any of the months of the year. So it was during the month of Purushottam. Oh, what was that? Man or beast. Man or beast. So this is half man, half lion. Neither man, neither beast. So very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. He then garlanded uh, himself. The Lord garlanded himself with Hiranyakashipu's intestines. Thousands of Hiranyakashipu soldiers then attacked the Lord, who easily killed him, killed them with the tips of his nails. So this is a phenomenal classic picture of a painting of Hiranyakashipu with on the lap of Nishingadev. Nishingadev's nails in the abdomen and the intestines garlanding him. There was very nice. Uh, was there that uh, uh, that he, nobody had a garland ready for him, right? So he garlanded himself mm. with intestines. <laughs> mm. Nobody offered him a seat. <laughs> so he sat on the throne. So he sat the tr on the throne of Hiranyakashipu. Nobody gave him water. So he drank the blood. So he drank the blood of Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> <laughs> These are the three etiquettes, right? No. Yes, Nariman. <laughs> yes. He's got all this snake covering on his head. Prabhuji, I've never seen that before. Mm. Anantasesh. Anantasesh. Anantasesh, okay. Balaram. Balaram, yes. Mm. Okay, beautiful. Lord Vishnu sleeps on Anantasesh in Milk Ocean. Y yes, yeah. yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 yep, he always accompanies him. Very good. So these three things are usually done, right? When you when a guest comes to your home, you, you offer them water, seat, a water. seat first, yeah, I suppose, a garland, if they're water. exalted personality, and water. So Nishingadev decided to help himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes the sages or the Brahmins, they chant mantras so that the place can be purified. Even then the Lord doesn't appear. But here, he took the seat of Hiranyakashipu, a demon. Normally, the guest, the honored guest, would not take somebody else's seat. He would be given a seat of his own. But here, the singer there, he showed actually, I, I think this comes a bit later on, that his devotee is always glorious, no matter what. So this is Jay in his, in, in his previous uh, life as... Uh, doorkeeper of Vaikuntha. So Nashinga they've honored Jay by seating, sitting on his throne. Let's have a look, see if it's there. So Lord Nashinga Dev's condition after killing Hiranyakashipu was as follows. His mouth and mane were sprinkled with drops of blood. His fierce eyes full of anger were impossible to look at. <laughs> licking the edge of his mouth with his tongue, decorated with a garland of intestines taken from Hiranyakashipu's abdomen. 
He resembled a lion that had just killed an elephant. That's quite appropriate as well. Sometimes we see in the forest, there's a fight between the lion and the elephant. Usually the elephant loses. <laughs> the Lord had uprooted Hiranyakashipu's heart with his nails as if to inspect it, thinking, I was happily leave, living in his heart. But how did this unfortunate person make anger and hatred live there as well? <laughs> so that's our condition, right? Lord is living in our heart, but in our heart is also living anger, lust, greed, attachment, envy, pride. <laughs> so there's a lot of parallels between Hiranyakashipu and us. The unparalleled prowess of Nasingadev. His power. Sorry. Kaushalya. Oh, Kaushalya. Yes. Prabhu, yes. I just wanted to ask if Lord is sitting within our heart, Right. Then why all these dirty things are still in there? Why can't Lord take them out for us? <laughs> <laughs> he would if we asked him. Yes, he would. We, he would. we do ask him, <laughs> Prabhuji. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, but we have to ask him with a lot of intensity and humility and sincerity. You know, then he'll do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he will do it. He, he satisfies the desires of his devotees. He will do it. It's just we have to be, he wants us to become intense in our prayer. Oh. He wants us to really, really pray hard. So we become very close to him. So sometimes his difficulties are good because they can make us close to him. Yeah. And the Lord himself is sometimes thinking, what's going on with my devotee? You know, I'm living in his heart, but he's still got all this lust, anger, greed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to also make some effort as well, you know. <laughs> yes, Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. 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 Yeah, in that respect, Mataji, you know, we did a verse yesterday, which was to show how Krishna shows his mercy in verse 10, 11. From Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I dwelling in the heart, you know, with the lamp of knowledge, um, get rid of the uh, darkness of ignorance or something. Anyway, verse 10, 11. We were talking about it yesterday. Haribo. Good, Thank good. You. Thank you very much. It's really good to also link when we do things. That's very good. Uh, Thank you. And it shows how it links so nicely together, huh? These prowess is as follows. The hair on the Shingadev's head shook the clouds and scattered them here and there. His glaring eyes stole the effulgence of the luminaries in the sky. Because remember, it was dark. It was getting dark at that time. It was twilight. So the sun had just set. His breathing agitated the seas and the ocean. Because of your roaring, all the elephants in the world began to cry in fear. Aeroplanes were thrown into outer space and the upper planetary systems by the hair. Due to the pressure of the Lord's lotus feet, the earth appeared to slip from its position. Mm -hmm. And all the hills and mountains sprang up due to his intolerable force. So this is Nishingadev. <laughs> Due to his effulgence, the sky and all the directions diminished in their natural illumination. It's really powerful. One of the most powerful incarnations of the Lord. Oops. Hiranyakashipu, uh, sorry, Nishingadev occupies Hiranyakashipu's throne. Due to fear, the remaining demons had already accepted the Lord's supremacy. Seeing no one who could challenge him further. Nishingadev sat on the throne of Hiranyakashipu. This way, the Lord showed that his devotee is always glorious. By sitting on the throne, the Lord showed who should be the king. Although he does not accept the seat offered by sages, purified by mantras, he accepted the throne already used and not offered to him because it belonged to his devotee, the gatekeeper Jay even though he had been cursed and took on the nature of a demon. By this, the Lord showed that his devotee is fortunate. 
in any condition of life. So we shouldn't really think of Hiranyakashipu as a demon. He's actually a devotee, Jay. Then the demigods start offering prayers. Um, the demigods individually offer their prayers and obeisances. The hands folded at their heads. Lord Brahma prays the Lord as the creator, maintainer, and destroyer. Because Lord Brahma, he's a secondary creator, right? Visarga, he creates. He's given the potency by the Lord. But he wanted to give the praise to the Lord. You are actually the creator, maintainer, and destroyer. And also, he was a little bit feeling guilty because of him. Hirani Koshupu got so much power. Because of him, Prahlad Maharaj was put in such difficulty. So he was trying to pacify Lord Nasingadev with his prayers. But Nasingadev was not pacified. He was not happy. Even after the prayers, by all of these demigods, he was still not happy. Lord Shiva, he requested the Lord to give up his anger. <laughs> You've done the needful now. Don't be angry anymore. And they were, they were not standing very close to the Lord. When they were doing these prayers, they were like a kilometer away. <laughs> they couldn't approach the Lord. He was so furious. He wasn't just furious with Nishingadev, uh, sorry, Hiranyakashipu. He was furious with the demigods as well. Where were you when my devotee Pallad was being harassed? You were hiding. You didn't care about my devotee. So he was furious. You're so powerful. You're administrators of this world. I've given you such responsibility and you're so irresponsible that you ran away and not protected my devotee, Prahlad? He was furious. Indra was thankful that the Lord recovered his share of the sacrifice. <laughs> the sages could now perform the austerities and the Gandharvas could sing and dance. The Prithilok residents could now enjoy offerings of the Shraddha ceremonies. The cities could regain their mystic powers and the Pujapatis pro procreate. The Vidyadharas could again disappear and appear. The Nagas got back their wives and Manu again reestablish establish and Dharma. And the rest of the demigods could engage in the various services of the Lord. So that's the end of this chapter. Uh, it's the most incredible, one of the most incredible chapters in the Bhagavatam. Truly amazing. In fact, the next chapter is as glorious as this chapter. Any questions, any comments? Anything you'd like to share you've heard which we have not included because this doesn't give the full pastime necessarily. It gives the essence. Uh, Prabhuji? Yes, Nani Ben. Yes. After this, uh... Uh, the Lord Narsivadev, he just disappears or merges away, with, goes back to the Golak Vrindavan, where he came from? Yes, pretty much. Uh, he doesn't do any uh, particular pastimes, apart from a little bit we'll see coming up in the next couple of chapters. Okay. But what he did do, he got this uh, desire within his heart, because we'll see how Prahlad Maharaj, even though his father was so bad, Prahlad Maharaj still asked, asked Nasingadev to uh, protect him. So when Prahlad Maharaj asked him, Nasingadev was thinking, how, how, I wonder what it's like to be a child. So after this, every incarnation he had, he stayed on this were in this world longer, having a parent. So much Kachvaraha, Nasinga, Vaman. Vaman Dev had Diti as the mother. Right? He wanted to relish what Pallad Maharaj was relishing, even though Hiranyakashi was so bad. <laughs> um, Pallad Maharaj was still respectful to his father. So after this incarnation, he stayed longer. Prior to this, he just came and he went. He did his job and he went back to uh, Vaikuntha. 
But uh, Prabhuji, after... you can, you can say something about Narsingha Pali or something. You can In go on. Mayapur? No, I, I I just remember vaguely years and years ago when I went to Mayapur and there's this place, Narsingha Pali they yeah. call it. That is where there's a pond where Narsingha uh, is supposed to have washed his hands and cleaned mm -hmm. or something like that. And they, nice temple there where they do kirtans all the time. Okay. But generally yeah. he didn't stay back. Uh, I mean, didn't do uh, anything specific after this. But in the avatars after this, he, 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 would, uh, he would interact somewhat more with, uh, with his devotees on earth. Anything else? Anybody else? Nani Ben, you happy? Yes, yes, probably, yeah. Tomorrow also we'll just do one chapter. It's a little bit snail pace at the moment because uh, yeah. we're trying to, uh, <laughs> we're very close to buying this property and uh, a little few things going on, so. <laughs> okay, but that's in a way it's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, usually I try to rush three chapters in a go but yeah it's, it's better to do it a little bit slowly oh, that's fine use us time to read and recap as well yeah good good thank you so much thank you Nani. very yeah. good okay. Okay. so uh, in the Lekamaji, you can uh, go through the lessons Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna everyone Hare Krishna. okay so Krantra Chimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, lessons from uh, Canto 6, Chapter 1. The Supreme Personality of God had existed within the heart of every living being and is prepared to give bhakti yoga to everyone, but one must be capable of receiving it. Chapter 2, since our consciousness can be changed by spiritual education, we simply have to carry out the order of the Supreme Lord to become free from the influence of the modes of material nature. Chapter 3, after long story days and penances, one may obtain mystic powers, which eventually are vanquished, but the powers obtained by the mercy of the Lord are never vanquished. Chapter four, uh, by the pious activities, some souls are promoted to the higher planetary systems, thinking only of enjoyment, but it is stated that there is no peace and prosperity in the free worlds without disturbance. Chapter five, oh, we moved it, chapter five. Thank you. It doesn't always happen that good parents get perfect children or vice versa. Good or great personalities can, good and great personalities can also appear even in the demoniac family. Similarly, demoniac personalities can take birth in pious families. Chapter six, as the saying goes, education starts at home. Anyone can start learning from a very tender age where the brain is like sponge in an empty room, ready to absorb and retain any acquired knowledge. Chapter seven, if we perform bhakti yoga in relationship with Lord Sri Krishna, we can immediately acquire knowledge and detachment from the world and be situated on the platform of pure religion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. And Madhusudan Babu? Okay, Hare Paul, Hare Krishna. Hare. Right. I'll go to my notes. Uh, okay, Hare Krishna. Nice, wonderful, you know, this chapter and the way you've gone through it. Going through all the... Um, feels like as if you're watching Lord Nasinga deal with uh, Irani Kashipu in, in, in a... Well, very nice, anyway. So in chapter eight, Shri Prabhupada in the purport makes this comment uh, or mentions that when a sin, sinful man enjoys material facilities, foolish people sometimes think, how is it that this sinful man is enjoying whereas a pious man is suffering? So we do see that, you know, sometimes they're so sinful and all that, and they seem to be enjoying themselves, they go opulence and everything, but they don't, we don't, we should understand this, you know, this deeper that by the will of the supreme a sinful man is sometimes given the chance to enjoy the material world as if he were not under the clutches of material nature just so that he may be fooled 
So sometimes, you know, like Lord Nusinga there was given a chance to sort of escape and hide. And then the demigod started to worry, you know, where is he gone? I hope he doesn't uh, survive. You know, if he does, we, we've had it. He'll take revenge. So sometimes even Lord Nusinga there was uh, just playing around with Hiranyakashipu a bit like that. So sometimes we think like that, you know, but some, sometimes these people have their own good karma they might be going through, but now they're accumulating bad karma. They're doing sinful activities. We should try to understand that, you know, what positions they are. So we should not judge people uh, who we may see as being sinful, enjoying, and hopefully we're not being fooled either. So we don't want to fall into that trap, you know, thinking, oh, I'm enjoying my material world. So, but I hope that Lord doesn't you know, fool us. But I don't think so because he's been very merciful. And we saw yesterday, no less than how Krishna is so merciful that he sends his devotees or spiritual master or a, a Bhagavad Gita comes your way or some. So his mercy is shown in so many ways. Hiran Kashyap was almost immortal in the material sense. He had almost become that immortality. But he lost everything due to having offended his son, who was a pure devotee. And then he was not following the Sanatana Dharma. He started to plunder everything. And uh, so that diminished his immortality almost. And he got killed. So he lost everything. Okay, Haribo. Thank you so much. Very good. Hare Krishna. Okay, anybody else? Anything else? Otherwise, we can go to the Nishingha. Coverage. So everything's about Luna Shinga today. Today. Well, Harry Bob, Harry yes. Bob. Um, I wonder if any of the um, people present has seen Hari Darshan. I said it last time when I did the story of Prahlad Maharaj. So if anybody gets a chance on YouTube, Hari Darshan, you will see the pastime of uh, Nishinga there. It's really beautiful. It's free on um, <clears throat> YouTube.